Christmas. So I just came back from a very cool estate sale in Marblehead, Massachusetts. And I'm going to go through what I got in my lot. Before we start, I should tell you that I got everything in this lot for $50. And okay, it was 52, but that's because I got a clock and a a gardening tiller as well for personal use for two dollars so everything <laughs> that's for resale was fifty dollars so full disclosure all right let's start with this this is a cross stitch it obviously has some age to it and I don't know how much age I'm gonna take it out of the frame and try to figure it out but old um, needlework does really well and is very cool so hopefully that was a good buy um, you can probably see Otterly the cat here. I don't know if you can see him, but he's helping me. Okay, this is an owl tray. And it's dirty, but I don't think it has any actual chips or anything. And this is the brand um, Corox, C-O-U-R-O-K of Monterey. And it still has the paper label on it somewhat. These trays are really collectible. They're vintage, I think, 50s, 60s. Corox famous satin black material, which is impervious to alcohol, boiling water, and cigarette burns. So this is a bolo. I mean, they have all kinds of designs and they're smaller ones and stuff, but this seems like a good one. Owls are collectible. Now I did actually get some three-dimensional objects this time, like this vintage linen something or other which appears to be hand cruel work. I guess this is a table runner or doily type thing. It has these sort of hot air balloons with flowers and baskets. Um, it does seem to have a bit of staining, which I can try to get out or maybe I'll just sell as is, I don't know. And maybe some spot diluted bleach will fix this up. This is a nice vintage one. I think this is a tablecloth. And it is, again, kind of stained. We'll see what we can do with that. And it's very mid-century modern. Like, this, look at this chicken. This chicken is like mod. Again, this one's kind of dirty, but it's marked Vera, which you might know from Scarf. She's a textile designer. And then I have two of these, which are crazy. Oh, they're tablecloths and they're they have like all these um liquor labels on them i think this is probably 70s i'll do some investigation actually oh my god they're curtains <laughs> they're terrible so yeah these are curtains with liquor on them two of those <laughs> nice so you have a vintage um sata no iron ultra cale king fitted sheet in the package this old cutesy uh, linen stuff is often pretty popular. There was a lot more actually not in the package and I didn't really want to deal with it, but I figure new old stock can't go wrong. Okay, this is getting weirder, but I got a bunch of vintage toothbrushes still in the package. I haven't looked these up, but they apparently do sell this one. This is a little gross. Yeah, for some reason, apparently old toothbrushes do sell, and I see these tags on here are from a store that Ann and Hope hasn't existed in 20, 30 years. So they're definitely old, I mean, aside from the awesome 70s uh, design. I found these swizzle sticks that are um, all road signs. I don't know, they might not be that old, but I figured they might sell anyway. There's a lot of them shoulders etc I know look at this stuff is not paper but don't worry that's coming so I use these to wrap something this is just an old scarf that has a gross stain on it it's polyester it's symphony scarves it's probably not really anything this is like so 70s this reminds me of my childhood it's just a napkin and here is another Vera napkin. I'll probably just do a lot of 70s napkins. I don't know why everything is so stained. This one is a, 
I feel like we had so many things with these kind of patterns in the 70s and 80s. But I was using those to wrap this little cat that is, you know, kind of nothing, but I thought it was cute, so I figure someone else will too. It doesn't, it's not marked, it's probably like made in Japan or something, it's iridescent. Here's another swanky 70s. This is Irish linen, made in Ireland, still has a tag, ugly 70s thing. Oh, and it was from Filene's, which is a store that has been gone for many years. Cost $1.49. That was pretty pricey. I got some old popcorn boxes. They're really creepy. Look at that clown. Um, baseball player, football player, hockey player. Everyone is like mean and gross looking. This is a catalog from the 70s, I'd assume. Yeah with all kinds of cool linens and stuff. Guess probably where they bought some of these things, Corning Ware. So catalogs often do really well. Oh, this is for um, green stamps. So I don't know if those do well. And I got a ton of these uh, magazines, Moore's Poetical Works. It's like a serial, but they have these nice engravings in them. So those might come out or they might stay in. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these, but I, I got a big heap of them and I'm not really sure of the date. Here is another catalog. This is Sears catalog actually, 1939. Oh, that's weird. I have another Sears 1939 catalog. This is a little beat up, but it's pretty fabulous. Look at these women. <laughs> Look at these underwear. Look at these prices. Um, this is not going to fit, but it is a map, an old, well, it's a chart actually, which is a C map, but it's of China, Eastern Coast, Huilin, San Harbor to Hong Kong. It says it has corrections and additions to, uh, to 1881. I'm not sure when this was actually printed. All the dates on it say 1881. So, it could be. I don't, I feel like it's newer than that, but I'll look into that. It's a pretty cool chart anyway. I, I really like nautical charts. I have to smooth that out. Uh, Yankee Sailing Ship Cards. This is just like a bank promo piece, but it has these really nice reproductions in it. I think this book should sell well. I'll have to look into it a little more. A Stroll Through Historic Salem. I might just keep this, actually. This is... I like to... Uh, pick up books about Salem where I live. So we're gonna put this in the personal pile over there. Here's another book, The Fabulous Fantasy Films. This looks pretty interesting. It's from the 70s. Oh, we've got a couple more old toothbrushes. We've got some, I don't know, this is just a weird Christmas ornament thing I picked up. It was in the bathroom, you know, as they are. And, um, What's it say? Tender Heart Treasures Made in Taiwan. I don't know. Whatever. People seem to like weird things like that. Toothbrushes. <laughs> and then here's some more of these more Poetical Works magazines. Here's some more. Here's a little carved owl I thought was nice. Oh. I don't know about 3D stuff, you guys. It's tricky. Here's a keychain for Mainline Motel in Maine. This isn't that old because it has an area code, but probably does glow in the dark, so there's that. This is um, a box of, I think this is for so tracking the temperature on one of these machines. And there's, these are, I think these are finished ones and these are blank ones. And I can definitely use these in my Etsy store for junk journaling stuff, if nothing else. If they have no like intrinsic value, but they are pretty cool. And this is like summer 1971, at, like August pointed out, and it's pretty cool. I have this is apparent is a hand colored um, engraving, State Street, Boston. It looks like the 1830s. It's signed. W.H. Bartlett, who I don't know who that is, but does appear to be a hand-colored engraving. 
Here's another one of Daniel Hall in Boston. What appears to be the 1860s. Um, same artist. So these were probably done, you know, later as a set of historic images. Here is a hand colored engraving of an American swan. Uh, this is, oh, this is an Audubon, drawn from nature. J.J. Audubon, printed in Philadelphia. So I'll have to look up what edition this is. It's nice though. Okay, this is <laughs> a random bag of paper placemats <laughs> from the sublime to the ridiculous. They all the same. Oh, they're different. No, they're the same. So it's Cape Cod. And on this side, there's more. I don't know. People like paper placements, usually that come from a place. Um, I don't know if these will do anything, and if not, they can go in my junk journaling ephemera world. Speaking of which, some nice old graph paper. I always like this stuff for selling to junk journal people. And along that same line, a, a whole bunch of paper from a yacht club in Marblehead. This one's boxed, but it's just like a whole pile of paper. This is actually, I believe, the Yacht Club for Kids, where they indoctrinate the young sailors, I think. That's a piece of cardboard. Not for sale. Sorry. Here is some uh, playbill uh, handbills for a production that took place in the 60s, 1964. This one's on cardstock. These are just uh, old reproductions, I guess. And it's, you know, it's old timey typography, but it's still it's from the 60s. So it is actually old timey itself now. These are really nice. The Thames is a ship. I'll have to look up what these are exactly, but uh, drawn and etched by E.W. Cook. There's another one. The Victory and at Spithead. There's another one, Fishing Boat. These are really nice. I mean, if you like nautical stuff, stick it in there for safety. This one, I don't know, I might have to keep this too, but these are uh, Jay's Marmot Squirrels. They're pretty awesome, aren't they? They're also Audubon. I do have some squirrel on the wall already but we might need more this is going in the potentially keep pile see this is bad i should not keep things these are some really nice fashion plates the edges are all cruddy but i may trim them or just sell them as is this one is uh they're french la mode de paris number one so that style looks what 1860s yeah um here's another one this looks 1880s, oh, 1882. This also looks 1880s. The colors are just fabulous on these though. Here's etching of Man O' War, who I assume was a racehorse. I think this is, I mean, it's a, it's a print, but this is probably an original. It's like not signed by hand though, so. Look into that. Here's a dog, one of a black lab, eating a duck. It's funny that's a black lab because look, it's like this is like old school black lab before they were bred to be purely black. Um, this I think is a fairly modern reproduction. CM Goff, I have to look that up, but this may be Marblehead or some recognizable North Shore town. This is apparently the remains of a magazine, but it looked very cool. So I just picked it up, thought there might be ads. I was, I opened it to that and I was like, yeah, I'll take that. Like, oh, Jean Cocteau? Is that Jean Cocteau? Who knows? Um, oh, a letter to Americans by Jean. This looks cool. Jean Cocteau is pretty awesome. Um, so we'll look at this. And there's some ads in the back, small ones, but these could be good. Yep, so that will be fun. Oh, that's nice. Chrysler adding color on the back there. Let's see if we can save that. Here is 
another hand colored uh, engraving, another says Faneuil Hall from the water, which is funny because it's not like that anymore at all. There's all sorts of land here now that's been filled in and the aquarium. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> these um, botanical prints that are, you know, these are modern-ish reproductions. I mean, you know, within the past, oh, it's 1983. Okay, so, um, but they're really nice. Uh, and this is just a calendar from an insurance agency from 60s and it's got a few pages missing, but it does have the flying cloud, which is a famous ship people are interested in. This, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it's pretty awesome. I mean, it's in a Polish. Dated 1927, appears to be printed, but it's very interesting style. And I'm gonna try to figure out more about that. Here's some more botanical prints. Oops, oh. This is a, a Pierre-Joseph Ray Duque, who's very reproduced lately because he's easily accessible in the public domain. But these are, these are nice, and then we have some more ships. Bark Suriname. Um, again, these were probably a set and probably not that old, but they are nice. Like, I might consider putting one of these on the wall if it was the right ship. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of these. Bremer Haven. Is that the same one, Suriname? This is a map of Antietam and Sharpsburg. I don't really know anything about it, but it seemed like something a Civil War person might like. This <laughs> puppy's groaning. Um, again, this is more Civil War related art. Not sure who this artist is or how old it is, but looks like it. Maybe from a set of prints, or maybe tipped into a book, though it doesn't look like it was taken out of a book. Here's a Civil War etching, Surrender of General Lee. These are, I think, pages from that magazine that have nice, um, you know, some really nice ads. So, Saks. This is really nice. <laughs> I like this artwork a lot, or these gloves. And there's also nylons. Um, some perfume. Perfume ads do pretty well. Um, some hair stuff. This is a contact sheet and I it doesn't have any information on it, but the pictures are cool. <laughs> I don't know, this woman in a hat with a flash, watering can. I don't know what's going on, but I liked it. This, I think, is the cover of that magazine and this is like a die cut to this. Uh, the Spirit of Flair Interpretation by Rene Guo. Let's look into this. This looks very cool and modern, 1950. And then there's an ad on the back, so that something will come of that. There's this uh, post office uh, money order receipt from 1955. Probably not super useful, might go in a lot. This is a oil painting on board. I have to decipher it. Uh, seems to be from the 20s. It's like kind of amateur, but hey, whatever. <laughs> so a notebook from 1971 with the sailing season summary of races. Um, I don't know if this is going to be of interest. It might be. It's just like a handwritten journal of all the sailing races, presumably in Marblehead in 1971. So random, some random first day covers that I just I wasn't even gonna pick up, but then I did, just because it was like basically free. So yeah, these are all first day covers. This is just random American Bank Directory, 1967 for New England. It's like a list of all the banks. I don't know how people collect bank stuff. Again, it's like kind of when things are free or you take a chance. I mean, they're not free, but like I said at the beginning, I paid 50 bucks for all of this. There's some more ads. Um, some nice ones, like mink and coats, um, Revlon, Sagnomore nylons, it's nice, Holt Renfrew, do we have that here? No, it's a Canadian department store, Holt Renfrew. Then we got some postcards, 
and this is Lover's Lane and Bailey Island, Maine. I mean, some of these might be good, but some of them are pretty obscure. Maine, Maine doesn't really do that well. This is Massachusetts. This is hand colored and it's Cottage City Mouse. I don't know where that, that's probably part of some other town now. The steamship, we have a lighthouse. This is a deed, a land deed from the 20s. Again, just see if there's anything that's interesting about that. Oh, it's from Salem. It says 1976 mint set. I don't even know if there's stamps in here. Let's see. Nope, it's just the holder. Well, that's boring. That is not really worth much of anything. Oh, wait, wait. There's some. Oh, well, there you go. So we have that. I mean, again, those are not really worth anything, but hey, at least they're mint. And then we have the same for 1975. More etchings or engravings. I like this one. Fall, Folkestone Harbors, Low Water. It's, um, it's England. It's dated 1831. We have ships. A Collier, 1829, London. Looks nice. Um, HMS Prince. Cow's Boat. Yeah, this is all English stuff. These are pretty nice. 1828. Legger on the beach at Brighton. That's cool. They have places. Here's another fashion plate. Kind of. This is just like a print, not a colored engraving, but it's still nice. Embroidered silk cord. Exhibit number two. It's big. And this is. This is like the Boston Globe used to put out these supplements. Like when I say used to, I mean in like the turn of the century, like 1905 that were printed on this like placematty paper and it's really brittle but this is a pile of them usually they're even in worse shape than these and they're not really that exciting i don't know if anyone collects them but just sort of pick these up and here's another one of these crepe silk what's going on here oh these must have been from some kind of book yeah i have to figure that one out more of these crazy placemat um, newspaper supplements. That one, that's pretty cute, the pug. Some nice uh, pastoral things going on. There's more of that book. You know, we were talking about Art Nouveau. Look at that. Odd. Here's some more um, deeds. I'll find out what these are all about. They seem to involve same family so maybe we can tell a story there there's some more um this is letterhead for a bank oh no not a bank this is brown and nichols school um which is now buckingham brown and nichols it's a pretty fancy famous prep school in cambridge i don't know just it's a, there's um letterhead as well i can probably date this based on these people who were the the president and stuff but it's not that old it just again thought it might come in handy <laughs> this is how hoarders are born oh this one this one was gonna have to go on my wall i think this is <laughs> groundhogs oh they're so awesome old and young yeah and we have a swamp hair nice nice these are audubon plates again birds and birds these look like they came out of a book wow black vulture or carrion crow that's a goth bird double crested cormorant a lot of these have them on both sides i think these definitely look like they are plates from a book but they do look hand colored Ink. Yeah, these are hand colored. That's really nice. They're well done. So to figure these out, um, a whole mess of them. There's a knot bird. <laughs> it's a <laughs> cat doing what cats do. Some 
and look at this. I don't know why, but that reminds me of my dad somehow. Uh, so my 70s bumper sticker. It's another calendar that is not that old and is used. Robert E. Lee steamed boat on it. I don't know, might be of interest to someone. We got some Harvard sports news from the 60s. We got some Gulf Florida maps. There's more. This is a Harvard Yale football thing. Some bonus stuff in it. Here's another one of these idea book green stamp catalogs. Here's a 1971 Harvard football thing, of some sort. Another Harvard sports thing. And some more of these. I'm not sorting very well, am I? <laughs> I got some Harvard football 1977, blah, blah, blah. This is uh, some college hockey business from 1977. Oh, whoa, look at her. That's some bell bottom figure skating. Ice follies. I probably went to that actually in 1977, but when I was going to Ice Follies. And I probably thought that was a normal pair of trousers. Um, so I picked up a bunch of these um, tourist brochure things. Probably gonna lot a lot of them because I've noticed that they take forever to sell otherwise most of them. But some of these are pretty cool. A lot of I think all of these might be Florida. So all this got some, you know, real I mean gas station maps and some travel documents and some all these brochures, Everglades, Silver Springs, that stuff couple of these Harvard College sexennial reports from 1963. I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's worth anything. I have another one from 57 that has some papers tucked into it. Look at that. This is some Harvard Masonic Lodge thing. Um, and I picked this up. This guy next to me was like, oh, I used to be the head of that. Harvard Masonic Lodge, but he didn't reveal any secrets. He did say he had the original of this artwork in his house though. This book, for some reason, everyone in Marblehead has to own. I don't know why, but we did when I lived there as a kid. It's always priced really high on eBay and stuff, but I don't know that it ever sells. By really high, I mean like, you know, like 30, 40 bucks. It's a it's a history of Marblehead that was sort of self-published in the 70s. There are these two McDonald's rulers. I don't know if those are worth anything that they have. Uh, the Hamburglar and the Captain. I don't think we have the Captain anymore. Discovering horse brasses. I thought this could be an interesting reference for all the horse brasses I've run into. I don't know. Um... There's this spoon, which has a lot of silver hallmarks on it. It's priced $5, but I got it as part of my bulk deal, so it's pretty heavy. Silver value, if nothing else, and it comes with its own handy carrying case. Um, we got some little, these fold-over badge things, like Ike and Stevenson, McCarthy. There's more in here. Um, a lot of pinbacks. I don't even know what's in here. National Audubon, Ike, McCarthy, Red Cross. Hey, Otterly, don't eat that. Um, I am a member of the Sunday School Are You? Hey, Otterly, why are you? Otterly is very interested in one of those um, vintage linens. Some sailing stuff, skiing stuff, Boston Museum. Otterly, why are you eating that? Big eye like that. I think these are very common. But, you know, sailing, rock club, sailing. Make it in Massachusetts, so that used to be a thing in the 70s. Uh, America's Cup. Oh, uh, you get the idea. So these are like all sort of 60s and 70s, mostly 70s. I raised hell with my mother-in-law, Zoom Zoom. I don't know what that refers to. 
going, Connerly, why are you eating that? I don't, that 70s Irish linen tastes really good, apparently. Connerly. Um, so all kinds of this stuff, yeah. So 78. Oh, looks like we have a whole collection of those. Okay, that's going to be a good lot. Um, this is a sticker. This looks like a parking permit, actually. These are modern Chrome postcards. Like, I thought this one was good. It's like, they all seem to be Florida, which has to promise, though not necessarily these cockatoos and flamingos and parrots and stuff. <laughs> Parrot Jungle I went there in the 70s. But some of these like hotel ones usually sell and boats and I don't know, I gotta go through them, but it's probably all the same places those Florida brochures are from. I don't like that one. You know, Florida tourist stuff. What's this? This is an identification check for the Eastern Grid. Oh, this is a bus ticket of some sort. Uh, that's interesting. So look through those, but they're all they're all um, sort of relatively modern, 60s and forward, I believe. This is there were a lot of stereo view cards, and I didn't pick them up because they didn't look like they were very good. I mean, they were fine, but they didn't look like they'd sell. I just picked up a couple that caught my eye. Like this one is Yokohama, Japanese fisherman. Probably won't sell. I just I don't know. I liked it. <laughs> The more Florida bro travel stuff, we have Fort Lauderdale, glass bottom boats, and maps, water skiing, fishing tour thing, a lot of like um, boat tours and jungle cruises and all this stuff. Jungle Queen. Oh, and then this is a vintage house paint chip chart. Uh, 69. So chip charts usually are pretty good. I mean, I've only ever sold ones that are older than this, like from the 20s, but that's probably some value. Maybe that's going to be a lot. There's another paint chip thing. This is a different brand. This is all torn up, but Hancock House Paint. Um, another House Paint thing. It's like another one. Another one. This is just some tourist thing for Marblehead. I don't know what year, but it has a nice map in it, so forth. And the, I think the ads might be entertaining, if nothing else, because there are a lot of places that aren't there anymore. Um, this I haven't really looked through thoroughly, but it's pretty awesome. It's um, it's a 1887. July 1887 um, book of engravings and stuff in French. Um, it says all seems to be like letterpress printed and there's all these engravings and things. I don't know. I have to look through this. It looks like they cut some out so maybe that's where some of those other prints came from. And some of these pages aren't even cut. But let's see. Oh, that's great. I like that. Um, oh, these are nice. This is artist. I can't see, but I'll look into that. Um, so yeah, these are Victorian engravings in this big book that is kind of needs some TLC. <laughs> This is a flexi disc of bird songs. I actually thought I could learn something from this because I really don't know my bird songs and sometimes it bugs me. So I'm gonna listen to this. I'll put this over here. <laughs> it's a, a tool uh, brochure thing. This usually do well. Um, I got some a program for the Nutcracker in the 75 with some tickets. I don't. That's probably not that exciting, but I thought it was cool. It had the tickets. Same with uh, Boston Pops performance. Here's some more um, Harvard football. This is Harvard and Princeton football. Harvard and Dartmouth football. Okay, this is crazy. 
So I think what's going on here is that the person who lived in this house, which was an 18th century house, was maybe going to document its history in some way, or maybe when they did um, renovations, they wanted to save some of the history. And so I think they've tucked it into this Life magazine. And this map has nothing to do with that, but is super cool. Oh, wow. Look at that more closely. But there's all this old wallpaper, which looks like, I mean, this is old wallpaper. And then in here it says, well, it's just the cat, pieces to start casebook, little tiny um, paint chips. So I think this is a documentation of the house. It's also tucked in a life magazine. These are super delicate. Let's do something with those. Um, so I, look, so they must have been renovating and saving stuff because here's more paint chip stuff. All kinds of like stuff for when you're redoing your house. And then more wallpaper. Like look at that. I, and it's like, it's like layers of wallpaper too. Well this one is anyway. There's, it's like thick. Interesting to me. It's like kind of the pro kind of project I like. And then we have this whole life magazine from 1967 Vietnam era. It might have some good ads in it. And then <laughs> some more postcards, some lake in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Um, Whalem, that's a disused amusement park. So there's that. There's a jail. There's Squirrel Island. Always want to go there. So yeah, these are, um, this is the amusement park, Wayland Park. This is a real photo of something we'll figure out. It's a church. I don't know. Some of these are probably promising. This is Mount Holyoke, YMCA camp, more Wayland Park. It's our, this disused amusement park, more of it. This is a hotel, just Lancaster Mass Town Hall, that's Wayland Park. Um, it's another real photo. I don't, probably can't figure out what that is, but it's got some turn century people at home in Ipswich. Some more people. Oh, I got some info there. Another YMCA. This is a busy scene in the marketplace of St. Petersburg. I just kind of like this one. I don't know and also Moscow. This is a fountain pen base, which like who cares, but I have this fountain pen with no base um, that I need to list. I have a few of them for the Estabrook dipless fountain pen. So it's kind of weird. I'm going to clean that up and list the pen with it. Here's a small kiwi uh, sculpture. This is just a tourist item from New Zealand, but I liked it. And perhaps someone else will too. Of a random silver and abalone bracelet, a random sterling tea, like tiny spoon. This is just like a little scrimshaw or fake scrimshaw, we hope, keychain. And this is a single earring that might be gold, but I don't know, probably isn't. And that's my $50 haul. <laughs> so if you are still watching, you are a brave soul. And I think I'm going to go back to the sale um, tomorrow or the next day because <laughs> it was sure cool. And I'll also uh, stick in some pictures of the house somewhere because it's one of these crazy 18th century houses. Not as crazy as the 17th century houses, but still pretty crazy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope that was entertaining in some form. And thank you. And take